Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks again for all of you for being here. Um, um, Director Harriger, you talked about specialized technologies, and it's my understanding that a majority of the inspections um, and interceptions that are done are done using microscopes and um, hand lenses. And so I wondered what types of technology, other technologies are you using? What types of new technologies would be helpful for you as you try to become more efficient at um, these interceptions and identifications? Well, thank you, Congresswoman. So we use uh, non-intrusive inspection also in our layered approach for things entering the United States. When, when the, the commodities and passengers are entering the United States, we have some very high-end x-ray technology that we're able to deter discern that whether there are organics, for instance, in there, we need to take a look at it. So the, the computer and the technology in there actually assist us in validating that it is something we do want to look at, including biologics, diagnostics, reagents, and other things that may be controlled by, by veterinary services. Uh, prior to the arrival, we use a, a battery of, of, of in our targeting arena, um, again, looking at that layered approach, all the advanced information provided by the passengers, the airlines, and the vessels, and the crew coming in to take a look and discern what that risk is uh, as well, looking at their prior history, looking at the country commodity matrix, whether or not that there is a disease outbreak, for instance, in that part of the world, factoring all these in to make the decision as to whether or not we want to take a look at that. In the passenger environment, we seized a lot of commodities. We seized 1.6 million quarantine materials last year. That's one leg, one piece of beef jerky, or, or a dozen oranges would all count as one. That's in the passenger environment. In the, in the cargo environment, we don't concentrate so much on the quarantine materials as we do as we as conducting the exams on behalf of APHIS to find any plant pests and ensure that it's free of those. When we extract the pest to, to pass it over to APHIS, we do have some high-tech um, biological equipment, some, some, some microscopes and such, and we only take the identification of that pest so far, and then we pass that identification over to APHIS. Our job is to filter it down to see, yes, this is something we definitely want APHIS to look at. And then they have the specialty and the experts over there, the entomologists and plant pathologists, that will discern that this, this is Asian citrus psyllid or it's a fruit fly or, or a pest of concern. So are there particular technologies that you're lacking right now that you think would be really helpful in doing the job that you're doing today? Or um, do you feel like you've got sufficient resources um, with respect to being able to identify potential threats when they come in? I believe we have, we have a, a vast array of resources, including when we're, we're cutting into wood packaging material, our sawzall, and all the mechanical parts. We, we piggyback on some of the assets that our enforcement size has to tear into, to, to, uh, tear into uh, cargo and stuff without disrupting the, the flow of the trade there. But I, I believe we're, we're doing quite well in that area. Thank you. Pam. Um, one of the things that we've talked about is how important interagency cooperation is to, um, to responding. And I wondered if both you and Mr. Shea might be able to give us an example of um, a, maybe a particular situation, the collaboration that took place not only between um, your two organizations, but also maybe with state organizations in terms of response and how that works. Our interaction with, we're piggybacking on, on, on APHIS's interaction uh, on plant protection and quarantine side with the plant protection, being the national plant protection organization with the National Plant Board. And there's four regional plant boards, and we were invited by APHIS in around 2008 to start attending those regional meetings and the national meeting. That's probably one of the most keynote things, is being able to get up there with Mr. Osama Alessi's staff and, and talk about what we're interdicting at the port of entries. We create an Agricultural Quarantine Inspection Partnership Committee that Mr. Shea was instrumental in launching with our former Commissioner Basham back around 2008 and 9, which brought in the State Departments of Agriculture, their representative, two State Departments of Agriculture, the members from the uh, State Plant Regulatory Official and, and as well as the veterinarians, to focus on what are the issues that the states have that CBP can bring to the table from an interdiction standpoint at the port of entry, webbing together also what APHIS has and, and, and provides in the um, regulatory arena. If I could add just one thing of a specific interest to the Pacific Northwest, we've been partnering with CBP to inspect ships while they're still in the water for signs of Asian gypsy moth. I'm sure you're aware we're dealing with some pretty severe Asian gypsy moth and European uh, gypsy moth issues in Oregon and Washington now. Mm -hmm. But by partnering with CBP to look at these ships before they even reach the port, we have a much better chance of preventing more of them from getting in. Thank you. Thank you both. And uh, yield back, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr.